Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Glaswegian Geeks. And by exciting, I mean soul-destroying and painful. Me and Mario have just sat through one of the worst things I've ever had the great pleasure of sitting and watching. Mario, would you like to break the news to everyone about what you brought to my house? Yes. What blasphemy you brought to my house? I wouldn't say blasphemy. Yeah, so we've watched the 1979 Captain America. It had its moments. I'll interrupt, right? Um, for anybody who didn't know, last week, uh, on our last podcast, me and Mario did say that we were going on a journey of self-discovery and self-appreciation. <laughs> and we were going to go back in time and watch terrible comic book movies so that we could garner a little more appreciation for what we have now. Well... As it turns out, I fucking regret that, and now we've decided to alter it a bit, and we're going to do a good, the bad, and the ugly sort of thing, where we're going to review good movies and bad movies, and just downright terrible movies, and we're doing this just to ease off, because doing 12 months of just films like what I've just witnessed just would would kill me. Yeah, and plus we don't want to come across as a couple, now we've got other people uh, available for upcoming podcasts we don't want to come across as all scotch people are whiny fucks we are we um, are really but you know we, we want to put out a positive image can, can we just point out that you you just cut yourself off from saying a couple what are we not a couple no are we are we not a couple we're a couple of friends who the fuck super is? friends who, who is super she? friends who is she who is she you <laughs> monster anyway so on with the review you Which, can start. Well, let, let's let's say uh, we'll we'll name these episodes. the The title will be for each podcast will be something that we find funny or downright ridiculous. Uh, unfortunately, for this one, before you go on, we should point <laughs> out that in the seventies, writing was a bit uh, like so, especially for TV movies. This Captain America, well, these two Captain America films are, were made for TV movies. If you don't understand what that means, just think Sherlock. Sherlock does its like three TV movie series, and that's kind of how it goes. So imagine that's what this was, only more torturous. Um, so in the seventies and uh, even today, writing can sometimes be a bit bland and a bit naff and a bit unbelievable. Well, a line that we're the the name we're giving this podcast is <clears throat> what is it? He's coming at you. Pull out now. A classic line from this movie. A classic line from this movie, which, you know, you know, I think we can all relate to in our own way. I think we've all <laughs> had an experience like that. So, um, Mario, do you want to, uh, you know, tell me first about the film because I took in less of it than you did. Please do. Oh, 90 minutes of mm, and interesting stuff. 85 was waterboard worthy. <laughs> I bet that's what these, you know, like white noise and stuff, I bet they have that, like, just shown on repeat, like, to make people submit. There's, there's obviously a time of relevance with this film because it's so 70s, leaving the 70s, and it knows it. It knows the 70s are going to be over in a year, and it's just like, God, we need to, we need to just put everything 70s possible into this movie. And, um, you know, that is confirmed with the use of music, the use of bad acting, and the use of bad writing. And anybody who knows Captain America will probably relate them to, you know, the, the more attractive Chris Evans. Yep. We did not get an attractive Captain America in 79 it, it, or the it's 90s. Quite, it's quite a like, big nose, like... I'm not let, let's, pick, not be, let's, let's, let's not be criticizing noses, right? <laughs> let's not be criticizing noses. We're not that kind of person, okay, people, right? Okay, okay. I'm a people, and I don't think that I want to be criticizing people's noses, okay? <laughs> but I will say that he was genuinely unattractive. <laughs> uh, no argument from me. Uh, the, the cast, yeah, you had a guy that looked like a kind of doppelganger of Roger Moore, who was your main bad guy. And who... there was a weird young. Um, a weird young looking um, Mark Tarkin yeah that's what he looked like he did um, he was odd and in fact everybody was odd but yeah I don't, normally we would talk about the film in a three act structure like we did with Suicide Squad yeah or like we kind of touched on with the 19 
90s Captain America. But the thing is, is I can't talk about the three act structure in this because there is no three act structure. There, there really wasn't. It was more. Let Let's just put things together and see how they come along. Like, well, how about this? We'll do story, characters, and then everything else. <laughs> okay. Right, the story. The, the story. Uh, the story begins with uh, Steve being in the Marines already. Now, there's there's a very very big difference between the comic book origin and this bastard child. The fact of the matter is, there was no fucking origin story in this film, which well, is probably a good thing, because you know some people just can't take origin stories. But this film certainly needed it, I think, in. Well, maybe in the seventies, more people read comic books, so more people knew. Poss- maybe. Possibly, but we we get this right away. Steve's in the Marines, and then he's off to see somebody, and then there's a whole operation between people radioing, getting him going down a road, a truck spilling oil about maybe at least a two hundred meter stretch, maybe longer. The, in fact, that's possibly the longest scene in that movie. So Steve's driving to whatever after being diverted down the road and after this truck spilled oil all the way in front of him and he spends about a good part of maybe a minute or two steering, trying to correct himself, not wondering what the hell is going on with this. Who? This truck spilled all this oil? No. And as you said, uh, Duran, he actually drives better re- in reverse than he does going forwards. Yeah, what the he ends hell? up reversing and he ends up managing it quite well. I mean, I can I can appreciate that. I mean, the man who lives for the moment, deals with the situation as it comes, kind of man I need in my life. But to me, it's just like this film is a lot of fluff because in the in the kind of first bit, you know, we're introduced to Steve and then Steve goes, these people try to kill him. We don't know why they're trying to kill him. Yeah, there's actually no plot point to it. It's just... Well, we do. We find is, out later. Yeah, later on, but it's just oh, someone's tried to kill him or something. We don't know why. Yeah, right. So, and then eventually after that, Steve ends up in the Oh, lab. no, 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 wait. We missed the, po- the part that I nearly wet myself with. What so po- the van nose dives off the edge of a cliff. Steve's all right. He's, he's not got a scratch on him. <laughs> but his shirt is ripped at the front and back. Like, how? How? There's... That would need to something would need to go through him to cause that. It's it's the it, mate, it, it's it's, the it's his bicep. Of, it's the guth of just that bicep. Like, just went pfft, and ripped his shirt. Like he went forward and it was just like oh, and then I'm surprised he didn't like come out the uh, the truck just ripping his own shirt. Like look at me. To be fair, it was probably Guy um, Red Brown a little more sex appeal because he had none. <laughs> and, Maybe that's what it was there for. I mean, there was nothing for me. I was just sitting there like, oh my God, I can't, I can't do this. You couldn't be any more turned off? Mm. Nowadays, I can look at superheroes and go, oh, I want a bit of that. Thor. Loki. <laughs> I'm, Loki more, of a, I'm more of a, a Daddy Downey Jr. Uh, um, Daddy Downey Jr. sounds that, grim, that's, doesn't that's it? That's very creepy. <laughs> um, um, anyway... Anyway, what was my point? Ah, yeah. Well, nowadays I can see sex appeal in my superheroes a wee bit. Scarlett Johansson, Robert Downey Yum. Jr. Yum. Chris Evans. Yeah. Chris Hemsworth. Damn right. No Mark Ruffalo. He's not my type. But you get what we're saying. And the thing is, is like, in the 70s, Red Brown was obviously at some point seen as sex appealing, maybe. Maybe. I don't know how people looked in the 70s. I wasn't alive in the 70s. Anyway, sex appeal aside, right, so after this bit that Mario was really angry about, Steve ends up at a lab of his father's old lab partner uh, where he is gracefully told that his father was... Had had created a serum called Flag. Which is basically supposed to be the super soldier serum. Um, I can't remember what it stands for. I don't even want to go into it. I don't, well don't. remember what it goes. I don't. I, no. Yes, I don't we're want, doing it, James. We're doing it. Well I, I don't. Mario is now racking his brain trying to remember what it is. Um. But yeah. Um. So this serum is basically the Super Soldier Serum. Only it was made by his dad, and they've called it Flag. And what this does is it gives him his superpowers, like his super agility, his super speed, his super jump, stuff like that. And. 
he rejects it at first. He, he pretty much flat out rejects it, to be honest. He flat out doesn't want anything to do with it, which fair play to him, I wouldn't either. But then obviously he gets into a bit of a predicament, a little quinky dink when he nearly dies. And then the scientist who works with his dad basically says, right, well, you know, he can't really say no now. We can just force it upon him whether he likes it or not. I've made that decision. So he is administered flag which stands for full latent ability gain which as they say is a steroid so captain america has roid rage at this point genuine roid rage and um so the government and when he wakes up after it the the scientist says people that people and things that we have tested this on haven't really survived you know they, they after usually a couple get... of weeks they lose their minds and you, you don't want to know the rest yeah so Steve, I mean, the way he's seen it is he could have died. He could have died then, or he could get maybe two weeks before he died, maybe. Because he doesn't know that he's going to live for quite a long time. <laughs> we know he's going to live for quite a long time. But um, he gets um, he gets away with that, um, and he's so ungrateful. I was angry at how ungrateful yeah. he was. It's like, oh, but there, I was going to die, but uh, now I have to you, live my you, life. You saved me, so I'm angry because I could die with this. You were dead anyway. You were about to die on a fucking operating table. But no, let's just go. I'm grateful, but now I don't know when I'm going to die. You were dead fucking days ago, you selfish fucking prick. Camden, Camden, Camden. Camden, Camden. Cam- no, no, get angry, he's an asshole, right? I can't be dealing with that. <laughs> like, how, like, we get it, right? Obviously, he doesn't want to be this super-powered nut job. But, um, you know, like, the scientist does say, look, you were going to die, I made the decision, I didn't want you to die, I gave you it, that's the end of it, no more arguments. And Steve is just like, oh, no, like, uh, I just, like, can't do this. Like, he's, like, a, like a young goth teenager. Yeah, I want like, to... Everything is so I want dark. to sit back and discover myself. You want to get sit back and fucking laid, boy. He wants to sit and do nothing. He's, here's the thing. Red, brown, emotionless. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a Kristen Stewart <laughs> of 1970s TV. He, he speaks in a rather... He speaks in a very light way, which I think is a little bit weird because he delivers things like a child like i didn't want this this isn't how i wanted to live my life this isn't this this isn't that i want to live a quiet life i want to do this but that's pretty much the extent of his acting ability because obviously he says them all near enough the exact same way yeah and no tone different difference in any of his lines he's very emotionless Apart from a couple of scenes later on, which we'll get to in like 20 seconds because the movie is so rubbish. Ah, right, so <laughs> I'll, I'll speed run it, right? So anyway, basically he's in the hospital and a doctor says, oh my god, you've like recovered so quickly, like it's amazing. And then some guy run, comes in with a revolver with a siren oh, yes. and then says, come with me, Mr. Rogers, you have to come with me. Takes him to a meat packing plant. This is where Steve gets to show the actual power that he has. And basically, the, after like maybe... Two minutes of genuine ass fuckery, nothing being required. <laughs> um, they they bring him back to his feet, and Steve starts fighting back, and he gets a bit of a rage, and then he fucking jumps on a meat hook and slides round to the yes. other side of the factory. So instead of running, he just grabbed a hold of this. Yeah, like like if your super abilities, don't you think you'd be faster than a meat hook sliding round on its rail? Apparently yeah. not. Apparently not. Anyway, that's not the best bit about this scene. It is know. not. It is not. This the is a best scene where you bit. get to see Captain America himself beat people to near death. Not ki- he doesn't kill them because Captain America doesn't kill people, but you get to see him beat people to near death with dead, strung up, skinned cows and a meat locker. <laughs> that is literally his weapon of choice. That is what he uses, and he crushes a man between like eight of half them. a dozen. Aye, crushes a man between like half a dozen of them. Then throws a whole one under. <laughs> that scene was perfect. <laughs> Just like, oh, I'm going to throw this one under, and then I'm going to throw this one on a meat hook round to catch him off guard. 
Like, who, who, who the fuck are you, Steve? This is not my Captain America. Who are you? What have you done with Steve Rogers? To be fair, to be fair, I did love that scene. Oh, you I can't, did. It you was, can't it not. It was full of cheese. You can't not. It was, it was, it was cheese in a meat plant. Like, I loved it. Like, it was just perfect. And it's just, it, it was just comic gold. Oh, but he's one liner. It, I will let you deliver it because you you seem to love it more. <laughs> I love it because it's so bad. He phones somebody up. like He takes the... T- so he strings them up with meat hooks to hold them there. Because, you know, they could run away. Because uh, yeah, they could run away, yeah. And he picks up the phone and he's like, Hi, this is Steve Rogers. Um, I've just cut some bad, nasty-looking people. James, can I interrupt you there? You're doing it too... You've, you've got too much emotion inside you. It's bland. It's fuck, flat. Fuck up, don't take this to me. <laughs> right? This is my chance to be a star. Anyway, so I've captured some undesirables here, and like, and you better get here quick because they're gonna catch a nasty cold. That is literally his line. Yeah, literally his line. That's his point to do the cheesiest one liner imaginable. But this one liner wasn't even cheesy; it was just terrible, and it upset me. <laughs> it was just all that build up for nothing. I mean, when you watch films like this, this is the kind of thing you get excited about. You're just hoping that there's going to be one redeeming factor. And it's going to be in the one-liner. And there wasn't. So, you know, call me sad. It's the truth. Deal with it. Anyway, so what happens after that? He ends up back at the lab. Uh, oh, no, he's on the beach. He's yeah, on the beach. He winches the uh, female doc- uh, scientist. Yeah. And she's uh, like, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. Why? Because Simon saw. Oh, oh, who gives a fuck? You <laughs> pump her on that beach. You have sex on that beach. He will watch like a fucking sad little pervert to be fair that was the kind of thing that you would expect in a 70s sort of tv movie you would expect that they would go all out and just genuinely have like that kind of scene just to rake in a bigger audience because you know like because you know you, that, you need a love interest like, you need you need some some kind of emotional that, attachment it's not even that he already had a love interest no he never which was in the form of like spike <laughs> which was in the form of his friends daughter uh, not really he gets with her at the end shut up that was the love interest he can deal with it right i'm not here for your abuse right that's how i took it right he cared about her obviously very deeply but then he's got these superpowers so he's just like oh my god i can sleep with anybody like you know that's kind of like what captain america does you know what is that what you do when you become a superhero you're like oh look at me i can sleep with anyone tony stark uh, tony stark's a bastard though he, he Chris just flings it about thor uh, uh, only the worthy can pick up me own. And excuse me, Age of, uh, Age of Ultron. Uh. Age of Ultron gave us one notable fact, and it's that even Black Widow and the Hulk get it on. So <laughs> we're all humans at the end of the day, right? So to avoid this becoming a psychological topic, just accept that we're all human beings. Yes. Right. Yes. Anyway, so uh, the scientist that turns Steve Rogers into Captain America decides that he wants to make him Captain America because plot twist his dad was the previous Captain America before him shock horror like, shock horror this is where the story totally goes off a tangent of the a classic tale of Captain America no, so not only did his father create the formula not only was he in the marines before this not only was his dad a, a vigilante beforehand and not only that, but they called him Captain America as a derogatory term. Like, uh, what, like seriously? To be fair, I would call somebody Captain America in a derogatory manner. Aye. Like, I'd be like, oh my god, you're a pure Captain America. Piss off. Like, <laughs> but th- that's what they do, and obviously, like, they build Captain America up to be, you know, this bad figure. This, 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 this like, like it is, the villains treat him like he is a cheesy superhero. Which this film is supposed to... Like, if you get that kind of story, you're sort of like, oh, well, maybe this Captain America is going to change that. He's going to redefine it and he's going to make it a serious thing. Sadly, this film does not do that. Um, and I'm actually siding with the villains on this one. Um, Captain America is not a nice name to have in this film uh, because he gets some amount of abuse. He gets uh, into a lot of trouble. He gets attacked quite a few times. Hmm. Not, just, not, just a, not, not, not as much as Winter Soldier or Civil War, because special effects cost money. 
Yes, and this was a TV movie, so it was done on the cheap, we're guessing. Done very much on the cheap. Um, anyway, skip to the end now, because there's like, literally well, there's, nothing in between. In this movie, I just want to say something. There was about 10, 15 minutes of just absolute sheer torture. And it's just, like we said, long drawn out scenes of helicopter helicopter traveling helicopter traveling, moving van uh, bike moving he gets his motorbike Captain yes. America gets his motorbike in this which couldn't be more American if they tried um, and there's a scene where he's driving it and there's just a random ramp yeah. in the middle of the desert no well I think because uh, they were showing off the motorbike for him it was on a military base I'm guessing because there was military police nearby Okay, fair point. So, yep, yep. you can put it down to that those ramps were on a military base for him to show off. And did, those ramps then, and did those ramps have to be red, white and blue as well? Did everything have to be red, white and blue? Everything is red, white and blue in a Captain America movie. <laughs> you know this. It is it is written into the contract. Everything, James, okay? Everything. Okay. How, how American can we make this film? Very American. Indeed. Um, anyway, so he gets his bike, gets to try that a bit. He gets a shield, which the only time we get to see being used is to deflect a bullet. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. The only time that it gets thrown is from the fucking scientist. He throws it, it comes back, Steve catches it. That is the only it's fucking time that we actually see it being used it's, properly. It's hilarious, right? Because... That scientist, right? It's like they've made it on like an episode of like Mythbusters or something. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just testing it. And he throws it and it stays in the air for it's like... like a, it's like a 70s UFO, like, ooh, just spinning around in the one spot. <laughs> it does. It, it was like... It's like, it, it's like he was running that episode of Mythbusters and he was like, so uh, we've made Captain America's shield and we're going to test it. We're going to throw it. We're going to see if it hits anything. We're going to see how long it stays in the air. And then we're going to see if it comes back to us. <laughs> Throws it. I've thrown it. And then Steve catches it. And it's just like, oh my God, this is amazing. This is the best thing since sliced bread. And then you're just sitting there going... And he says that the shield is really powerful, even though it's obviously made of fucking plastic. It's made of but plastic. It's obviously made of plastic. But he says it's powerful, so I believe him. Right? But, but, but he James, says, he says, James. look, whatever it's... It, it was said... It was, you said, you said in the last podcast... That if it wasn't shown on screen, ah, it didn't happen. You're using you my own words against me. You were told that that shield was very powerful, so you just have to take it as well. Even though you know by the look of it, it's not right. So deal with it. That's me calling back on a previous thing because that's quite smart of me, and <laughs> you're just going to deal with that. So throws the shield. That's the only time you ever see the shield being thrown, and then that's the only notable scene until we find out what the villain actually wants. Near the end, we find out that the villain wants to set a bomb off. For the typical villain reason, money, one hundred million dollars, and that's um, that's the plot. But we don't find out that that's the plot until the last twenty minutes of the film, where you know we get to Every, see everything some, happens. We get to see some Steve Rogers super moves. Yes, this here's the thing. We reviewed the nineties Captain America movie, and we reviewed and we're, that. We're trying to recall that there was there any showcase of super abilities well, done a, done oh, a, obviously a done. Done. well obviously done a front flip over a car yeah <laughs> yeah that was it a car a car is like what, oh, I'm five, I'm five I'm feet well, at least five we, feet tall at least we got to see the shield being used yeah it was, here's the thing you take the two movies you get a shield being used and you see super abilities boom done perfect movie no no <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stop you right there because that doesn't fix the bad acting it in both not. movies it does not <laughs> But uh, yeah, there is n- absolutely no use of the shield during this scene where he's on. Uh, let's let's just say it: the villains are the head of an oil company because you know mm-hmm. they're bastards. They've got money because so, because the real enemy is America, <laughs> um, and they want to set off a bomb. So Steve finds out where where they where they're from, and he's being chased by the security. They're shooting at him. He's bouncing bullets off the shield jumping over them jumping up on stuff jumping down on stuff uh, then we get to see a moment three security guards are being are chasing him and we're, we were both thinking hold on he's going to use a shield that's going to go bounce 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 then come back no what did he do james he got the ultimate revenge a throwback to earlier in the movie he was thrown off the road by oil 
he opened up an oil he, valve he, he, and he just breaks up, He breaks off the oil valve. Like, yes. Oil is yes. not supposed to come out of there. He just broke it because super strength. And he breaks it off, and then he just starts spraying them with oil, and it's the it, it, three I, stooges. I felt, is, I felt good for him. I felt good for him. It, it, here's the thing: I it, said that he was flat, emotionless the entire movie. But he smiled at he that. He smiled. Bit, he? he had his pearly whites. They weren't even white. <laughs> Mate, it's the seventies. They can do whatever they want. All right. <laughs> they can look however they want, even if they are emotionless bastards. But anyway, clutching my pearl necklace with the stress. <laughs> <laughs> Red yeah, that, that's. I, like, I don't mean to keep going back to it, but red brown is fucking not attractive. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, oh, like, never mind. Continue. Yeah. So then we get a couple of more scenes of him showing off his superpowers, breaking open a safe with his hand, then breaking open a door just by pulling it. Like this, th- those moments here actually redeemed a small part of the movie. The fact that he never used the shield. They just used, oh, it'll be cheaper to rip a door off. It'll be cheaper to just open a, like, a dummy safe. But I'm, I'm living, but I'm living for it because, like, it actually pure crumples it up. I know. that That's the best bit. Like, And it literally makes it feel like it's nothing. But, yeah, that's the only time you ever see superpowers actually genuinely showcased, yeah. which is um, a shame because everything after this is just him being a normal guy. Which I yeah. suppose maybe subliminally I could go, hey, I could be Captain America. Yeah, yeah, you definitely could. It's not hard, Anyone could. It? Anyone could. Get a bit of steroids in me. Wee bit of roid rage, you know. Get ready to go. Aye. Oh, I need my dad to be as a scientist and present in my life. And create a serum using his own uh, DNA so that it works on you as well, you know. No, you're making it complicated. I oh, was... wait, there was... Was that, was that not uh, easy... Well, to like, be honest, an easy it was, path it, to go from. Well, well, no, 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 because you know it, it kind of stopped when I said my father has to be present in my life. It's not going to go past that, you know. And then you know, like, like, you know, I have no chance of being Captain America. <laughs> Maybe I could be Captain Britain. Maybe there is that. push. There is Captain that. Scotland. Captain Glasgow. No, because I've no good ginger hair. Fuck. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, I'm stereotyping myself. Anyway, moving on. Um, so anyway, blah 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 blah. Heli- uh, long helicopter scene. Long helicopter scene. We find out the villain has a, a heartbeat monitor strapped to his body. If anything happens to him, the bomb will go off. Very villainous. Very villainous. Even though it's the only villainous thing in it, because <laughs> we don't know what his plan is until this point. So he's built a bomb from like Steve's dad's research or something. Steve's dad's friend's atomic research. They were missing one piece. And one this tiny, guy just happened to one have tiny it. piece, one tiny piece, uh, because apparently they couldn't build a bomb of their own. They had to steal someone else's. So you know, you know, villains. Eh? No. Anyway, um, so yeah, Steve ends up stopping that, and then that's kind of it. Yeah, it's all bit, it's all bit, it's all bit meh after that. Isn't it? It's very meh. It he finds a bomb. It gets a, a vent from the truck that's transporting it to pump the fumes into the wee room so that he knocks out the guy because basically he's got a dead switch on him if he wants he can set it off or you know so steve using his super brain figures this all out and that's it really mm-hmm. it's it, it stops a bomb going off and that's it though at the end we did have the kind of superhero moment it had a crummy rubbish costume that he designed Yes. And then, then at the, in the last scene, we got the proper costume, the well, proper comic book costume with a helmet. It's not the proper comic book costume. Uh, it's as close as, it's better than the one that he had. Okay, it's better so. than the one he had. Okay, I'll grant you that. But um, I, I hear in the sequel, he wears the original one. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. The, the, what, the, the wingtips? No, no, no. The fish scale? <laughs> no, no. What? See the costume he wore through that whole film? Yeah. Like that one we just yeah. watched. That's the same costume he wears in the second one. Why? He goes back to it, apparently. Oh, oh, maybe he's washing that costume. Maybe he's, like, wiping the Nazi blood off it or something, You're, you know? like Doesn't he Nazis there, there's, <laughs> there's Nazis everywhere, and we know this for a fact. Right, let's not get political about that. Oh, no, I wasn't meaning that. I was meaning Captain America went some down. Oh, yeah, okay, there's Nazis yeah, everywhere yeah, in Captain yeah, America. That's everywhere. fine. Yeah. Let's not make a big deal about it. Though there it's was fine. no Nazis in this movie. Not <laughs> oil Nazis, maybe. 
No, there was absolutely no Nazis. In it. There was no actual Captain America villain in it. Like it was just a, I don't know, an oil tycoon just gone bad for for absolutely no, really no reason for money. Right. Like I said, like I could understand if he's creating a bomb to set off it against his competition, wipe them out so his stock rises. But that's not his even oil. the plan. He's, but it's not. It's not. Just, he just wants money. That I created a better movie in ten seconds. Yeah, yeah. You give him a reason, aye, and an actual reason, more money. Exactly, and that just oh, it just the film overall bothers me. Overall, absolutely. Okay. It was worse than the nineties one. The nineties one was redeemed by Red Skull. Yes, absolutely redeemed by Red Skull because Red Skull was amazing. Like Let's... it had mu- it had so many more memorable moments, uh, and we probably should have reviewed these ones first. But I'm happy that we reviewed the nineties one first because now I know that the nineties one isn't terrible. <laughs> well, it is terrible, it but is, not. But in a different ter- different perspective, you know. It's in the bad pile, not the ugly pile. Yes. And I think that these, this and its sequel will definitely end up in the ugly pile, never to be seen again. Uh, maybe we'll crack it out for uh, for shits and giggles. Uh-huh. But uh, for you. <laughs> let's let, let, let's compare it. We've seen for we've, the, we've for still to see part two, the death too soon. So let's compare the 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 three first Captain America movies: first Avenger, nineties, and this one. Okay. Um. Like, com- like give them a all a rating, like rate them in that, order. As, no, as a comparison, like of how shit this one is. All oh, right, okay. Um, First Avengers better than both of them, hands down. Hands like, down. Like you could probably chuck in every um, Captain America film in the seventy nine and the nineties one, and the First Avenger would still be better. Yeah, and the thing is, I like the First Avenger, um, because it set it up. It was a very it was it was a proper it was an honest it was, a, it was an, it was an honest, honest adaptation of it uh, and i and i love the first avenger i won't hear a bad thing about it um and then obviously winter soldier and civil war just top tops the bar every yeah. time we get up in america yep. so realistically if it's if first avengers better than these two films <laughs> well that's why i said first avenger because uh civil war like is completely like, different it's completely the himalayas compared to hell in scale the first avenger is the best kind of film to describe sort of like the the 79 ones yeah because it's like he's just he's just set in those times like and that's fine and that's kind of what the the first avenger is he's set in his time period you know um world war Two and stuff like that whereas um the winter soldier obviously is a more modern day take and it's how he adjusts to that the adjusting period kind of could be fit into the 90s one but not by much the difference being that he's come along since the first avenger and the avengers movie where he knows that he's in the modern day he just has to kind of live with it and move on you don't get that in these films there's no real emotional attachment to any of the characters which annoys me uh but that's that's the kind of main deal there's no emotional attachment to the hero and i think in every film no matter what it is even the Devil Wears Prada, which I love, <laughs> is, a, is a completely different example. Yeah. You do feel kind of an, um, an emotional attachment to the main character because you feel bad for her. And then at points you feel really bad, you know, for the sort of antagonising sort of character who makes yeah. her life miserable. So, you know, it's it's things like that and these films just don't have that and i don't know if maybe when they were making these they just thought oh we have to make it proper fan service and they thought they were giving us proper fan material when they weren't so i mean i don't know i would like to see somebody i would like to meet somebody or talk to somebody who actually seen this when it came out to see what they thought of it because if they think it's terrible and we think it's terrible we're not just being assholes like no, no, no. We're, we're not arseholes as such we're not even critics i'd say just purveyors of fine art yes yes and not so fine art very shit art i see anyway so you wanted to let me guess the budget Um, oh no we never found out the budget couldn't find it anywhere you had one job i know you had one job because this was a tv movie uh i'm guessing it's probably in the region of mm, i would say possibly a couple hundred thousand for 
Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even want to guess because my guess on the nineties Captain America was so bad. Like you said, it was an estimated ten million, and I'm sitting there going, "Who was handling that budget? George fucking Osborne." Like, <laughs> absolutely no way was like ten million spent on that. But you know, I don't know. Like, it, it's difficult to hazard a guess. And like I say, I would say that that technically should have cost less than <laughs> the nineties one. Yeah. Fifty well, grand well, tops. I would maybe say a million max because TV. If you're, movie... if you're talking millions, a million max. I wouldn't pay a million for that. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't. Like, I wish I could go back in time and stop them. And go, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, this is enough. And like, stop. Like I said, this is this this journey of appreciation and stuff. We should appreciate what came before, but I just can't appreciate that. Like, that was terrible. <gasps> and well, well, here's the thing, James. You wake me um, up. You wake me up at 8 o'clock on a Saturday morning and you say, let's do this. This yeah. will be great fun. Yeah. And now I'm sitting here thinking, my God, my life is an absolute waste of time. No, no, no. It's not a complete waste yet. What? We still need to do Death Too Soon. Oh, no. The sequel. The yeah. sequel. Yeah, this is part one of 79 Captain America. So we have to, by right, for ourselves, we need to do this, James, as a unit. No, I can't. Don't make me do it, Mario. Think about it. Batman tells Robin what to do. I'm telling you what to do. We're doing it. What, I'm Robin? Aye. Why, oh, it's fine, I'm handsome. Everybody likes me then. Nobody likes you, you moaning-faced cunt. Indeed. Um. So, <laughs> that was our kind of... Okay, okay. How about this? View on Captain America. Uh, kind, kind of view... Yeah, I, I wouldn't say we uh, criticised it too much. There, there were great points that the the special effects on his super abilities, which we did not get to see in the nineties, which is for which you would expect to see in the nineties. Yeah, like if they they honoured the nineteen forties kind of story a little bit in the nineties one, so they had a lot of good points. The use of the shield, the the red skull. The, they did a lot of good for it, but they did not show super abilities, which really disappointed me. Like but I then say, again, this one... But like I say, see, watching that, like, watching that one, which was terrible, and it was a TV movie, and in, in comparison, like, the 90s one, I think, was a cinema a cinema release. Yeah. Um, To me, like, watching the 79 one, and then comparing it to the 90s one, I'm like, yeah, okay, maybe the 90s one, maybe maybe it's still it's still bad but there is something worse which i'm pretty sure we said couldn't be physically possible but yeah apparently it is oh, oh and anything is possible anything is possible and that was certainly possible so hurrah we were wrong about the the 90s captain america it's actually um okay if you compare it to the 79 one we wouldn't encourage you to watch the 79 one hell no I wouldn't. I feel like my time's been wasted. and I would say maybe watch it if you want to have your teeth pulled out. Because that, that, would, that would take away the pain. Watch it if you genuinely have an interest. And then let us know what you think. Uh, because we would like to know what everybody else thinks. Uh, we, we, we per- I personally hated it. I personally really didn't like it at all. And it should get in the bin. Really? Alright, what would you rate it? Out of 5 or out of 10, make it easier? Uh, out of 10? I'll rate it out of 10, aye. Okay, what would you say? Nothing. I would give it absolutely <laughs> nothing. It's easy. You can rate it at 5, rate it out of 10, give it fuck all because it doesn't deserve anything. <laughs> uh, at least that's what I think. That's my free speech and you can't take that away from me, Mario. What, cool. would, you, what would you rate it? The story was rubbish. Had had literally nothing to do with the original Captain America. The they just went, oh, we'll take these plot points and we'll just cr- stick it in a big bowl and we'll just make a big jambalaya shit mm-hmm. and just mm-hmm. smear that mm-hmm. paste all over the red, white, and blue. Smells and tastes bad, yep. Yep. Uh, though there were some good points. The action scenes were relatively good. Had its comedic moments, you know, kind of comic booky, kind of one-liner, which was shit. Uh, and the super abilities, which kind of redeemed a small part of it so i would say 
out of ten, and this is me being very kind, two, two out of ten. Okay, well, you were more generous than me. Yes. Um, overall, yeah, the story's pretty poor. The characters are pretty poor. The acting's pretty poor. The writing's pretty poor. Everything's pretty poor. So, therefore, it gets a, a, a very big fat zero from me, and I don't think I can, I don't think I can argue that. And now I've got to watch the sequel. So, yes. on that note, join us next time for the sequel, which, and sequels are normally worse. <laughs> like, <laughs> normally. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. This one has Christopher Lee in it, so it's it's actually got a big name attached to it for me, so that's raised the bar. It's raised it ever so slightly, maybe to a 3 out of 10. <laughs> yes. Join us next time for Captain America. Death too soon with Christopher Lee, the only person that can act in the movie. And yeah, let us know what you think. If you've seen the film, let us know. Um, we would love to hear from you. And if you liked it, uh, sorry, not sorry, but uh, what is wrong with you? Uh, and that's all I have to say to that. And that is us for another episode. See you down the road. <laughs>